Hey guys, welcome back to Amarnon Explains Beyond. My name is Karish and I'm back with a really awesome movie this time. It's Filipino horror called Sukob, which focuses heavily on superstitions and wedding courses. Like you know, how a bride is not supposed to see groom's face before wedding, that kind of stuff. However, this movie is really interesting and have a great storyline and I hope you all enjoy this video. So sit back and relax as I tell you the story of Suko. On top of everything, if you're new to this channel then make sure to subscribe it because this is the only place you're gonna see horror from around the world. And with that said, let's dive into the video. The movie begins and we see a girl named Sadie and her fiancé named Dale. The two lives in Dubai, but they're back in Philippines for their wedding. Sadie and Dale first go and meet with Dale's family and everyone was happy to see him. Here, we meet Gilda, Dale's mother, and his other family members. We find out that all the wedding is planned by Dale's family because Sadie's family is a bit financially troubled. After lunch, Sandy goes to meet with her mother, Tessie, and after that, Sandy goes in her old room, but she was surprised to see that the neighboring house was in a bad condition. That house belonged to her old friend Helen, but now Sandy talks to a caretaker and it was revealed that Helen died years ago after her wedding. This upset Sandy and she asked her mom why she didn't tell her about Helen's death. Here, Tessie had to tell her daughter what happened to Helen and the story was mysteriously strange. Sandy finds out that Helen's father died a few weeks before her wedding and to avoid a wedding curse, Helen was advised by a priest to postpone the wedding for one year. But Helen didn't listen as she pushed through the wedding. After that, Helen's husband died in a plane crash. Helen died in a car crash and Helen's mother-in-law disappeared from the house next door. And according to Tessie, it all happened because Helen's wedding was cursed. Here in that story, Sandy felt bad and from here, the scene goes on a different story where we see a girl named Diana who was getting married with a guy named Brian. As the wedding took place, the church bell rings but it rang as if there was a funeral taking place and it obviously was a bad omen. The acolyte ran upstairs to tell the bell guy to stop ringing the bells but to his surprise, the bell guy was dead. Back on Sandy's story, we meet with a new girl named Joya and she just saw that dead bell guy in her dreams and that's cause Joya had psychic abilities. She was the daughter of a woman named Paola and Paola was one of the cousins of Dale. Paola and Joya had come to attend Sandy's wedding and at the dinner party, they do meet with Sandy. After a while, Joya sent something demonic at Helen's house and she also saw a presence in Helen's room and somehow Joya knew that something bad is gonna happen. Back on Diana's wedding, the dance was on but then the lights goes out and Diana saw a demonic flower girl in her wedding. Meanwhile, Sandy meets with his father Fred but Fred and Desi always argue with each other for some reason that we'll find out later. There Sandy calmed her mom down because the next day was her big day. On the other hand, we find out that Diana was already pregnant before wedding and now these two stories will take place simultaneously. At night, Sandy heard some demonic voices and we see the flower girl in the mirror and meanwhile, Diana and Brian woke up to find that someone ransacked their house and cut the lights from the maid switch. Next day, as Sandy's wedding was taking place, Diana found dried flowers on her wedding dress. As Sandy walked down the aisle, Diana's stove caught on fire. As Diana and Dale said their vows, suddenly, Brian fell off the roof and got fatally injured and also, Sandy got a nosebleed. Everyone took Brian to the hospital but he died in the end and at the end of Sandy's wedding, Sandy saw that demonic flower girl and it was clear that these stories were connected. Diana cried for her husband. Meanwhile, flower girl haunts Sandy but it was not just that. Actually, Joya was feeling everything that was happening so far and she knew that Sandy's wedding has gotten a curse for some reason. Sandy was already getting worried and she got even more worried when she saw that flower girl in the back of the car of her friends Betsy and Edith after Sandy sent them home. 
It was then that Joya came there and she told Sandy that there was something wrong with your wedding. But then Paola came and took her daughter with her. Scene goes on Betsy and Edith and they were on their way home when their driver started seeing that flower girl around the car and then suddenly the flower girl came at the front mirror and they got into a fatal accident. Back on Diana's story, we meet with some more people. Brian's mother, Pellin, Diana's cousin, Grace, and Grace's mother, Larchin, and also a friend of Diana named Irving. They all came there to see Brian's dead body, but to their surprise, the body was gone, and instead of his body, Diana found her wedding veil. Back on Sandy's story, everyone find out about the car accident in which the driver survived but Edith and Betsy disappeared. Sandy and others soon got to the accident site where Joya came and told Sandy that her wedding has gotten a curse for some reason. But Sandy was confused because she didn't break any superstitions. It was then that Paola came to fetch her daughter again as she was aware of her psychic abilities and she didn't want her daughter to get into those demonic shenanigans. Not only that, Sandy found out that instead of Edith and Betsy's dead bodies, the cops have found her wedding veil and it got her worried but it was clear that Sandy and Diana were facing the same fortune. Sandy goes and asks her mother about the veil and Tessie claimed that she had put the veil with the dress and she had no clue how it got there in the car. That night, Dale tried to make Sandy understand the fact that these superstitions are nothing but myths and she should not believe any of that. But meanwhile, Diana saw her dead husband outside the house. Following Brian, Diana goes into the woods and her cousin Grace and her mother Larjin ran after her. In the woods, Grace caught up with Diana and she calmed her down but it was then that demonic flower girl appeared in front of him and both were scared to their deaths and then suddenly Larjin, who was coming after those two, got hit by a truck so something crazy happened as Diana and Grace found Diana's wedding coat instead of Larjin's dead body. On the other hand, Sandy woke up at night as she heard some noises outside the window. When she opened the window, it was fine for a moment but then that demonic flower girl scared her to her death. Sandy screamed and Dale woke up to calm her down but on the same night, Sandy found a dried flower bouquet in her house and then she believed that her wedding is cursed. Back on Diana's story, we see a crying Diana because the cops couldn't find neither of the missing bodies and not only that, Brian's mother, Bellin, was also giving Diana a hard time since she never approved of her in the first place. Back on Sandy's story, Dale and Sandy goes to the bus stop to try and stop Julia and Paola from leaving. Once there, Dale talked to Paola and Sandy talked to Julia. There, Julia told Sandy that her wedding is cursed and somehow, Julia was feeling that Sandy's old friend Helen had something to do with that. Julia was not sure what and to be able to fully help Sandy, she must contact Helen's spirit. But Paula was against all that. She didn't want her daughter to be involved in such things, but Dale begged for help and didn't stop until Paula changed her mind. Back on Diana, she was presented with her wedding photographs and everyone was shocked to see that Brian's, Larching's and Grace's heads were not in the photos and two of them were already dead which leaves Grace and it could mean that she might be the next victim of the curse. Not only that, Diana's face was partially blurred in the photos but what does that mean? We'll find that out later. On the other hand, Sandy, Dale, Paula and Joya entered Helen's old house. The caretaker gave him a tour but Joya instantly had some visions. Following those visions, Joya looked around until suddenly she saw that demonic flower girl. Joya followed that girl into a room where a box fell on its own. In that box, Joya found Helen's wedding's photographs and in those pictures, the heads of those who died after the wedding were not visible. Joya began to understand what was happening and it was then that she saw a demonic spirit behind Paola. Joya tried to talk to the spirit but the spirit suddenly possessed Joya and she screamed. Hearing her scream, everyone came there but then Joya turned demonic and grabbed Sandy's hand saying, Your wedding is cursed because of your sister and no one can save you now.
Joya then fell unconscious, but when she regained her senses, she told everyone that Sandy's wedding is cursed, but it has nothing to do with Helen. The wedding is actually cursed by Sukom, which was a wedding curse that unleashed itself on improper weddings. Joya told Sandy that your sister got married in the same month as your wedding, which is a bad omen, and that was why Suko was released. Sandy didn't understand that because she didn't have any sisters, but then Tessie was shocked and she revealed why she always fought with Fred and the reason was obvious. Fred had an affair with another woman when Sandy was just a child. To confront Fred, everyone goes back to Sandy's house, but there, Sandy was presented with her wedding photographs and in those photos, the heads of Sandy, Dale, Tessie, Betsy and Edith were missing. Joya told Sandy that Suko will kill all these people if the curse is not lifted in time. After that, Sandy and Tessie confronted Fred and he apologized for his past mistakes again and again in a very cruel manner though. Tessie then left cause she was done with Fred but Fred told Sandy about the woman. Her name was Claudia and Fred had a baby with her but Claudia died after giving birth and Fred left the baby with Claudia's sister, Larjin and well, it was already obvious that Diana was Sandy's half-sister. Back on Diana, who came to visit a priest with Grace and Irving, she told her situation to the priest and there, the priest told Diana that her wedding is cursed by Suku and that happened because she got married in the same month as her sister but again, Diana was confused because she didn't have any sister. Not only that, the priest also told Diana that her face is blurry in the photos because Suko has chosen her unborn child to claim instead of her and that scared Diana. Back on Sandy's story, we see Tessie who had it enough and she then left the house. Sandy, Dale, Fred and everyone else goes after Tessie but she didn't stop until she was almost hit by a car. The car hit the construction site instead and when Tessie was asking the driver if he was okay or not, suddenly, the heavy material from the construction site fell over Tessie and she died. Dale and Fred immediately plans to save her but they didn't find her body. Instead, they found Diana's wedding gourd. Sandy cried for her mother and Fred didn't even believe that Tessie was gone. He continued to tell himself that Tessie ran away even when Sandy tried to console him. The next day, Diana was haunted by Brian's demonic spirit and she knew that he was there to claim her baby. Meanwhile, Dale and Sandy were seen on Joya and Paola but before going, Joya told Sandy to find her missing sister and she told her that either Sandy or her sister have to make a sacrifice for this curse to end. After that, Dale and Sandy were off to the village where Claudia lived. Once there, the two stayed in a hotel for the night where Dale goes to take a bath. In the shower, he hears something demonic and saw a head on the other side of the curtain. Though no one was there when he checked, it was then that dried flowers found their way in the water and he knew something is wrong. Outside the hotel room, Sandy found herself locked out. She goes back for a spare key but meanwhile, Dale witnessed that demonic spirit outside a window. That spirit crawled inside and Dale tried to run away but the spirit blocked all his paths. In the end, the spirit showed him the wedding candle and when Sandy finally entered the room, Dale was gone and she only found her wedding candle. Sandy understood what happened and she called her dad and told him everything. Fred asked Sandy to stay put and that he's coming there and the scene goes on Grace and Diana who were going home late at night when they were attacked by that demonic spirit. This time, the spirit grabbed Grace and took her to the other world. Diana couldn't find Grace after that but she did find her wedding candle. Well guys and gals and days in them, the wedding veil, coat, candle and tiara are four things that symbolizes a Filipino wedding and secure the bond between husband and wife and so far, Suko was using these articles one by one to claim the souls. Anyway, the scene goes in a police station where Sandy was reporting her missing husband and Diana was also there reporting her missing cousin but it was then that the lights glitched and goes out. Tables moved on their own and that demonic spirit came there and scared everyone. 
Edward ran here and there and said it goes back in her car, but as she starts the car, she hits Diana accidentally and this is how the two sisters reunite. However, the two didn't find out that they were sisters until Sandy offered Diana a lift to her home and on their way, Sandy told Diana that she was looking for Claudia's daughter. After that, when Diana figured out that Sandy is her sister, she made Sandy pull over, got out of the car and was angry because it was Sandy who caused the chaos in her life. There, Sandy told her sister her situation as well and was not late when the two figured out that they were both facing the tragic fate of Suko and if they want to get rid of it, they must work together. After that, Diana takes Sandy her home and told her that a priest is waiting for her in the village who might know how to stop this curse. Here, Sandy also gave Diana some validation, saying that she would have found her sooner if she knew that she had a sister. Well, the two then goes to the village square where people were dressed as trees for a festival called Tao Putik. Diana then took Sandy to the priest and there the priest did a ritual and told the two girls to burn their wedding veil, cord, candles and the tiara. The girls did that but in the end, when Sandy threw the tiara in the fire, the fire goes out and slowly the demonic spirit appeared from inside the priest. The spirit came toward the sisters but the sisters ran, taking the tiara with them. They ran back and sat inside the car but they, the demonic bride was waiting for him. Seeing him, the two screamed and ran outside but the demonic spirit kept following them. They ran and ran and ran and in the end got to the church. The two made their way upstairs where the bell guy died but the spirit was still after him. In the end, Sandy broke the tiara with a stone and they thought they escaped the spirit but they didn't as the demonic spirit came crawling upstairs and walked toward them. Sandy held her sister as the spirit was coming toward Diana but then Sandy remembered what Joya said that one of the two sisters must sacrifice and then Sandy just knew the only way to stop the curse. She then plunged onto the spirit and jumped out of the window sacrificing herself and finally ending the curse. Sandy died and Diana realized how much of a kind person Sandy was. Diana cried over her sister's dead body even though she barely knew her and the next day Fred came there and he cried too after seeing her dead daughter. The curse finally ended but Diana then came in front of Fred and Fred just knew who Diana was. Fred apologized for his past mistakes and Diana forgave him because that's the least she could do for her sister's sake. She can forgive and take care of Sandy's old man. In the end of the movie, Fred brought Diana back home and gave her Sandy's room to live. However, Diana was still super sad and thankful about and for her sister. Meanwhile, when Fred was alone, the armchair behind him moved on its own and suddenly, Sandy and Tessie appear there to take revenge on Fred and this is where the movie ends. So this was the summary of the movie, Suko. And I hope you all understood what I've told you and I like my video. If you like my video, please, please, please subscribe my channel and like this video so I could reach more audience. If you want to watch this movie, then you gotta subscribe to my Telegram channel and follow my other social medias if you want to get in touch with me. All the links are in the description box. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Hawk content. Because now I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, stay away. Because they'll always see you.